Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So, Gabrielle is also a banner Esper right now, and I know she's not talked about a lot because most of the players in the game already have their Gabrielle at like maybe R6 or something like that. But for the new players who are not sure whether Gabrielle is going to be a good Esper for you to pick or not, uh, and you're not sure whether you want to use your wish pool to summon for Gabriel or is this going to be like maybe the perfect time for you to get Gabriel for 100 wish stones so that you don't have to rotate your wish pool for another two months for example. So now let me explain a little bit more about why she's so good and why everyone rates her extremely highly and why she is till date one of the most meta experts in the game right now. So we're gonna start off with her strengths and her weaknesses, okay? So her strengths, she has strong buffs. In fact, she has two really good buffs in one single skill. That is gonna be a defense up and immunity as well. And I understand that the immunity says three turns here. Just ignore it. It's supposed to be two turns at R0 or R2. And that brings me to the next point. I am not gonna be talking about her R6. I'm only gonna be focused more on her R0 and R2 because most new players will not be able to get an R6 Gabriel right now. It's very unfortunate. Now aside from her strong buffs, she also has really good debuffs. So on her third skill itself, this carries a 100% attack down debuff which is very handy. And on her second skill, she has a defense break as well. Now even though each of the hits have only a 50% chance to inflict defense down, there are 3 hits in total and this averages to about 80 plus percentage proc chance which is pretty good. But in total, she only has a 70% chance to proc the defense break if you have full accuracy on her. Now another strength that she has is she is the fastest Esper in the game on par with Unas at this point. So she has the highest base, uh, she don't have the highest base speed but because of the ascension that she gets, that increases her actual starting speed to 116. Now aside from being a really good buffer and a really good debuffer, she also carries quite a lot of DPS as well and that comes in the form of her R2, especially her second skill broadside. Now this skill actually scales off very well according to your speed. So because this skill hits 3 times right, you can kind of think of it as each speed that she has increases your, your final damage by an extra 1% of your attack. So, so if you're like me with 230 speed, she would have an extra 231% attack multiplier in this skill which is very very potent. So you notice that my Gabriel does a lot of damage in one of my Fafnir videos that I've done very recently with Pata. You can go ahead and check it out and you can see just how much her output is in an AoE attack. And her final strength is definitely going to be her short cooldown. So she has 4 turns on her 3rd skill, but she only has 3 turns on her 2nd skill, which is very, very efficient. So she's a very good defense breaker, uh, in my opinion. Now, let's move on to her weakness before the rest of the content. So this is nitpicking a little bit, but I think the only weakness that she really has is the immunity rotation on her skills before R6. Now the thing is, at R6, her immunity increases to 3 turns, which is okay, this is great. But before R6, she has a cooldown of 4 turns, yet at the same time her immunity buff only lasts for 2 turns, which is not very consistent. Now as compared to other aspects like Fabrice for example, Fabrice's third skill which also grants immunity has a cooldown of 3 turns, so his downtime is only 1 turn on himself. And even for other aspects like Changpu, her third skill that provides immunity also has a much better uptime for immunity buffs. But like I said, that is just 100% nitpicking and this is not a weakness for her at all because this is also something that you can mitigate uh, by bringing her to R6 and therefore she becomes very efficient in immunity buffs. Okay, now let's move on with the rest of today's content which is just talking about all the different kinds of places where she excels in and she does not excel in. So we're gonna start off with the story and events. She's definitely a really good pick. She has all the immunity buff that you, your team needs. She has a defense break as well. This is gonna allow you to clear content very, very fast. Uh, as for Sonic Rift, believe it or not, even with my DPS set, uh, she is not going to one-shot waves at all. It is somehow not enough DPS, but that is mostly because she has a very low base attack, right? So this is definitely going to affect her final damage multiplier, I mean like the final damage that she can do. Uh, but moving on to the cute miracle, I think she's not bad over here, but the reason why I don't give her a 5 out of 5 is because for the most part at the end game, you wouldn't really be using Gabriel over there, you'd be using like a speed cleave team. She is going to be very handy when you are stuck in the early game or like in the mid game for example. Now in terms of all the Sonic Miracles, I think she is slightly below average in terms of bringing her as a support, but for Wind Striker, because Wind Striker has poisons, her immunity is going to be very effective and very uh, very helpful, especially if you're a new player. Now moving on to the Ritual Miracles, Kronos and Apep, she kind of sucks there. Kronos is because of her off typing and Apep is because she multi-hits a lot. Now as for Fafnir, she is excellent because she has a lot of multi-hits and she has the right element as well. And of course on top of that, she brings the immunity buff which is very very helpful. And even in the end game, most players are still using Gabrielle because she is very capable of dealing a lot of AoE damage. 
Now moving on to the Desolate Lens, I don't think she actually strives in any single one of them, not even for Shadow Kill. And the reason for that is because defense buff is extremely common. So it is most likely going to come in the form of your Selene, which is a more free to play as well in my opinion. And by using Selene, you already have your defense buff. You do not need her for the defense buff, which means she's only here because of the immunity buff. But yet at the same time, her uptime of her immunity buff is not very good. She's not able to consistently cast it very efficiently. Not in the same way that you can, uh, like for example, it is a little bit better to just use Fabrice, right? because Fabrice brings a lot more of like other buffs so I don't think she's going to be that good on average. Next up moving on to Sentinel Hunt, I don't think she strives in Furbital at all. I don't think you want to use her for the defense break. There are other aspects like Joseph for example that is much better at defense breaking Furbital because he carries other important stuff in his kit. But for the most part there's just very little room in using Gabrielle in Furbital where your goal is not to protect yourself, your goal is to just deal as much damage and control their AP as much as possible. But moving on to Counter Sonica and Dark Starlord, this is where she shines a lot. So in Counter Sonica, she has a triple hit, and you have Espers like Yunchan, for example, at R2, or if you have a Hall, this is going to amount to a quadruple hit. So she's going to be perfectly protected in Counter Sonica, and she's going to bring all the necessary buffs and the debuffs as well. Now, as for Dark Starlord, this is going to be the same thing, although her multi hit is not important, but she does bring a lot of important stuff, especially the immunity buff. So she is excellent in Dark Starlord, and she is widely used in this content. Now moving on to the tower content, this is very very straightforward. She excels in every single one of these towers, including the Calamity Island and especially the Calamity Island as well. She is extremely powerful in all of these content. And finally, we end off with PvP and as you can see, here's the Esper rating over here. So in terms of point wall, she is extremely meta. You will see her used very very often and in many different teams. So I'm gonna give her 5 out of 5 just because of how viable she can be. And the same goes for Knockout as well, she is extremely common. And in warm-up matches, her immunity buff is super important, her defense buff is also super important, her defense break is also really nice, and especially when you use her on the right set. So for example, she multi-hits a lot, which means that using her with the Tyranny set, for example, is going to allow you to stun a lot on many of her skills. So she has a lot jam-packed into her kit with the right setup. And the same goes for holo battles as well. She is also really powerful in holo battles, especially since she has an HP captain ability over here that is going to allow your team to be a little bit more tanky. So if you're going to be using her with experts like Meredith, for example, your Meredith is going to have a lot more HP and at the same time protect your Meredith from like other stuns and all that kind of stuff. So she's very good in PvP. She's definitely a 5 out of 5 in every single one of these categories. So all in all, averaging out, she is going to be a triple S tier as well, that is for sure. Her coverage is really good, her versatility is really strong, her viability everywhere is excellent. She is by far one of the best Espers that most players should start off with. So there's like Clara, there's Gaius, Gabrielle is also one of them. And the best part is that she has been viable since the start of the game. So for like the past one and a half years to two years of pre-global period as well, she has always been extremely viable. But before we end off this video, there is one more new thing that I want to add on to this particular spreadsheet. And that is going to be the ideal equipment sets. And how I came to this conclusion is because of Xne over here. Um, actually, there were quite a few of you guys who brought it up, in, especially during my live stream as well. And I'm not sure whether you're the same person or not, but what Xne is saying is that he missed the spreadsheet that I used to have that talked a little bit more about the, the, the different kinds of equipment that each of these aspers would strive in. So I'm going to bring it back in the form of this particular format. So from now onwards, you will see this at the bottom of the spreadsheet over here. So here are all of her ideal equipment sets, and this is definitely not exhaustive at all because uh, as you can see my Gabrielle on her PvE set, she is actually not following this format at all. Now let me explain. So the first set is going to be the Ocean Recurve set. This is going to be more of a caster, like a support buffer, right? So because of her poor uptime on her immunity buff at R0 all the way to R5, the Ocean set is actually going to mitigate that a lot, so that reduces your cooldowns, and that effectively makes her a little bit more efficient in throwing out her immunity buff, and of course everything else at the same time. And the recurve set is just here for more accuracy, and her second set is definitely going to be the Tyranny recurve set depending on what you're using her for. So if you're using her in the tower content, the, the Tyranny set is going to be perfect, because that's going to land a lot of stuns on all of her skills. So every single one of her skills have multi-hits. And of course the recurve does increase her accuracy which allows her to land the stuns more effectively. Now moving on to a PvP set, so the first set is going to be wind and something and the goal of this set is just to increase your speed as much as possible so that you take the first turn, land the immunity buff and the defense buff to protect your team. That is the goal of this particular set. So by right, you should have a speed lead as well to boost her speed a little bit more so that you can take the first turn as well. Now this is a second PvP set which is going to be the tyranny growth. This is like one of the most popular sets right now in terms of the tanky meta. So Tyranny, obviously you're going to land more stuns and growth so that you can make her a little bit more tanky. So maybe I can show you my PvP set on Gabrielle right now. So these are her stats. 
She is decently tanky, but she has a lot of defense just because her base defense is so high. So essentially, I'm running a Tyranny Recurve set so that I can have more accuracy, but you know what, it really depends on what you want. The growth set is actually quite good as well. Alright, so that sums up this video. So this is my final verdict on Gabrielle for 3.2.3. She's an excellent Esper that every single new player should try to get their hands on. And now that she is in the banner for like the next few days at least, this is probably a really great chance for you to skip the wish pool, right? Don't waste your wish pool by summoning her via the wish pool. Summon her via the current banner instead so that you can conserve your wish pool to pull for other Espers like Clara or like Gaius for example. These Espers are also must-haves in my opinion and of course there's Abigail as well. But anyway, if you have any other questions, leave it down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.